Stop loss captive, that's what we're talking about. And as, as Tom pointed out, there is lots of buzz. There, uh, everywhere we turn around right now, uh, if you look in any of the trade journals, self-insurer, business insurance, uh, all these different journals are talking about this as the concept. Um, we're lucky to be able to tell you that Berkeley has been doing this for just about four years now. So we do consider ourselves to be the market leader in developing these programs. Uh, demand is high. But at the same time, what we're trying to balance as an organization is making sure that we are selective in where we build these things. They take a long time to put together. There is the herding of cats mentality. Uh, and we'll get into that a little bit deeper as we go. Um, from a growth standpoint for us, I'll tell you why this is so important to Berkeley. And, I'll, and I'll, obviously, I'll share a little bit about the organization as well. But from a growth standpoint, in three years, we have tripled everything related to our MCAT product. The number of employers within it the number of programs we have in place, the bodies to support it, the overall revenue has tripled in three years. So that gives you a feel for just how exciting it is for us to be uh, uh, the pioneers in, in driving forward with this. Uh, we believe in MCAP. We believe it's working. We're seeing positive results, and we can talk about that as well. Now, that being said, there are also great stop-loss companies here. Berkeley is a stop-loss company. We believe in stop-loss as well. So there is a distinct difference between a stop-loss captive and an individual group that wants to purchase stop loss, that's a very important consideration to make. I'll, I'll reiterate again as we come near the end, this is not for everybody, okay? Stop loss is an important part of the self-funded vehicle, a huge part of the self-funded vehicle. Good carriers in the room, I represent a good carrier from a stop loss standpoint as well. MCAP is different, um, but they both have a place in the market that we're in right now. Let me tell you why we developed MCAP, Berkeley Accident Health, why we developed it. We originally developed it to move groups off of the fully insured marketplace. What we saw was many groups that were financially sound, employers, let's call it 50 to 400 life groups, that understood self-funding, wanted to get there, but couldn't get out from a pricing standpoint, couldn't get out from an informational standpoint, and were too nervous to go self-funded without really knowing what their own risks were. So MCAP was developed as a tool to take groups, one at a time, very scary, many come together, a lot more stability and safety, pull them out of insured as a group. So think about that from a concept standpoint. Now, I'll tell you four years into the product, we're, we're writing a lot more MCAP business for groups that are already self-funded and moving into this concept than we are on the fully insured side, okay? So um, why is that? It's the ownership mentality. Uh, Byron and I were talking a little bit earlier about this, but when things are going haywire and we don't quite know where they're going, we've got reform looming over us, you've got yeah, increases on your stop loss side. You've got the, the concept of lasers that has really penetrated our marketplace. Ownership mentality creeps up and people say, you know what, if there's an opportunity for me to take charge of my care, to, to me to take charge of my risk more so than I have now, I want in. I want to find a way to do that. I want to shed myself of taking more insurance risk and I want to take risk myself. And so we think that ownership mentality has a lot to do with it. When things are going crazy, an employer group at 250 lives that knows what they're doing and sees a significant line item in their total budget, 18 to 20% that they're paying for benefits, they say, you know what, I want to take more control of what I'm doing here. And the captive concept, and I'll dig into that a little bit more, the captive concept gives, gives that control. A couple other things. Uh, Like-minded employers. Tom spoke earlier about, uh, I think the quote was, work with people that think like us. Right, Tom? Captive concept, very much the same way you're going to band together with a number of employers that think like you, that are frustrated with the costs that you see, with are frustrated with the increases that you see, are frustrated year in, year out with the, with the peaks and valleys of the pricing of the coverage that you're buying. So you're banding together with a number of employers that, are, that have, that share that sort of mindset, that say, you know what, we want to take control together. As one single group, how do we do it? As many together, we have an opportunity to go and, and make that difference. Um, and, and the last component, and I'll dig into this more too as we get into to what a successful MCAP program might look like. Risk management and, and the Thrive program for Cyprus has all these items that, that, that can be done that will make a difference. And pulling out one of those items puts a significant dent in how effective that concept would be. Does that make sense? If we took out one or two and we started an a la carte approach to Thrive, it wouldn't be as globally effective as it would be. The beauty of the captive concept is that we're corralling employers together, all of whom are 100% focused on all the tools in risk management. Okay, So all of you are coming together from a purchasing standpoint, all committed to the best components of risk management. 
There is no piecemealing of those items, and I'll get into that a little bit more. So that's kind of how I wanted to jump into it here a little bit. Let's get into the slide. Let me tell you a little about WR Berkeley Corporation. WR Berkeley is a Fortune 500 company uh, listed on New York Stock Exchange, about 18 billion in total assets. The companies that are part of WR Berkeley are A-plus rated across the board. There's an, two things I really want you to take out of, out of this slide. WR Berkeley is made up of 48 LLCs. There are 48 LLCs in the WR Berkeley holding company. 47 of the 48 are dedicated to the PNC world. One of them, Berkeley Accident Health, which I'm from, is dedicated to the accident health side of the world. On the PNC side, captives have been around since the 60s, as Tom just mentioned a while ago. WR Berkeley has been doing captives on the PNC side since the very beginning of the marketplace. So, Important thing to take one about our organization is that we know captives. We've got the best brains, those that have been doing it for a long time. Why, don't, why it took us 40 years to move it into the stop loss side, who can say? But we've got deep experience in captives at our organization. Remember that. Number two, financial strength standpoint. This is still innovative. This is four years in. We're the market leader, it's four years in. So we consider ourselves ahead of the curve, but from a product years standpoint, it's still young. Now, it's proven concepts that go behind it. We'll talk about those things. I would not jump into an innovative product without a company that wasn't A-plus rated, that didn't have superior financials. WR Berkeley with a surplus level of 15, that means not only are they A-plus rated, but their financial backing behind it is as top level as you can get, okay? So if you take those two things out of the organization, we get captives, we know how to do this financially strong. Okay, what is a captive? We have uh, one gentleman here that mentioned he participates in a captive, so I'm gonna dig into this a little bit. A captive is essentially a member-owned insurance company. It is a medium for sharing risk, a medium for taking risk at a certain level, okay? I use some examples up here. The best one I like to talk about is Exxon, what's called single-parent captives. If you think about those organizations that are right there, Cargill, Exxon, IBM, and Xerox, big, big companies. Exxon has, let's think about all the things that Exxon has to cover for risks within its total organization. Refineries, distribution, mobile marks, trucking, uh, you know, make it up, right? There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of parts of the Exxon program. For all those programs, whatever the coverages they might need, general liability, property casualty, they're purchasing insurance for all those coverages, right? Think of the wasted money they're putting towards all the insurance carriers that they have to purchase that all those different lines of coverage for, all the money they're spending on their insurance. A company like Exxon has more capital, more cash, than most of the insurance companies that they're even working with. So they say to themselves, why don't we take the risk ourselves? How can we take the risk ourselves? The captive concept is how they do that. The captive concept, they essentially form an insurance taking entity. All the little carriers on the street that allow them coverage, place the coverage, but Exxon takes the risk behind it and they take it through whatever their captive is called, Exxon Insurance Company, located domiciled in Bermuda, whatever it might be. Okay, so that's really the concept of what it is. Take the risk yourself when your organization is a heck of a lot more predictable than buying a policy one at a time. Take the risk yourself. From uh, any situation where a single parent captive or, or a large employer sees an opportunity, things move to the small to mid-sized employer. So when small and mid-sized employers, just like in self-funding, self-funding took off from large employers when, when ERISA came into play in, in, in the early 70s, small to mid-sized employers said, hey, self-funding makes sense, we want in. Same thing happens on the group captive side. Single parent employers, big employers, find ways to make captives make sense for them. So small to mid-sized employers begin to band together and take advantage of that scale as well. And that's, that's the captive story. Um, I did, this is the section that I moved some slides around here because uh, what we do typically is talk to a lot of fully insured employers and we tell them why in a lot of ways they're wasting a lot of money in the fully insured market when they can move into this direction. So we're going to focus really on you as a group of employers here that are most of you or not all of you are self-insured already. But this slide's important. This is one that we use all the time and what we're basically saying is we've made up a company here. The company is ABC Incorporated and you've got all the line items of their total budget there that grow at 3%. Revenue grows at three, all other expenses grow at three, except for the employee benefits. Just like we talked about earlier today with trying to beat that trend over the course of time, despite the fact that what Cyprus is doing well is beating trend, that's not the case across the rest of the US. So 10% growth in employee benefits, what does that do to your margin over the course of time? It begins to eat away at it, right? 
it begins to kill your actual operating margin over the course of time. So we always ask employers, especially those that are, that are fully insured, stand in 2012 and look back five years. Take these numbers and make them your own. How does it look? Probably not very good. Now you're standing in 2012, go forward five years. Where are you heading over the next five years? How can you make a difference in your overall care to begin to work towards eliminating erosion in your overall margin? The closer you can get trend to the growth of your total revenue, the better off you're going to be as an operation going forward. That's what we think the economy of scale of joining into a captive can do for you. Your options right now, pretty self-explanatory, but be fully insured, guaranteed cost, paying out a uh, profit margin to the carrier from dollar one up on the fully insured side, guaranteed cost. We're not here in this room to talk about that. Self-funded plans, you're all in self-funding for a reason. Transparency of claims, uh, pay as you go from a cash flow standpoint, flexibility of plan design the ability to mix and match good partners that go with your plan. Design your own plan. You begin to take charge a little bit more. That's the beauty of self-funding. Group captives, we'll get into that. I mentioned earlier why do large employers self-fund. These things are all common sense, but worth revisiting. Large employers are into it because there are significant advantages to self-funding. Uh, the, abil the ability to implement proven risk management strategies. A large employer's got two, three, four, five hundred people in their HR department, right? They're going to take advantage of all the carrots and sticks that might be available out there. They're willing to jump into those things. They have financial leverage to assume risk. They can take more risk burden on themselves. They have the size to provide predictability, lower risk premium. This is all a big gamble for insurance companies, right? So basically, the less predictable Byron's company is, the more I'm going to charge for profit premium on his group. The larger you are, the less profit premium we're going to charge. That's the whole game on the way this thing works. And large employers can purchase stop loss at a higher retention level. You all have stop loss. If you had stop loss at a much higher level, the trend year over year would be a lot lower than it is in that mid-level range that many of you are probably at, which would be somewhere between 50K deductibles and 350K deductibles. Okay? So large employers have the ability to purchase a higher deductible and benefit from a lower amount of trend over the course of time. So the, met, the, the concept is large employers do it. How do we build this for small to mid-sized employers in our traditional market? So what is MCAP? MCAP provides small and medium-sized employers with greater transparency, self-funding, control, self-funding, and the ability to see all the data as it goes, the ability to make your plan design changes, the ability to make decisions as an organization, stability. Right now, you're one standalone 250 life group. You're self-funded. You purchase and stop loss. You never know where things are going to go. That claim is out there. You're now purchasing stop loss in a pool of 1,000, 2,000, or as we did just on these eight or nine tables, 3,000 lives. Stability across the board from a stop loss standpoint. And of course, the opportunity to reduce costs. So here's my analogy on this. Self-funding is the experiment. Self-funding is, is actually self-funding is the laboratory, right? So you all have your lab coats on and you are doing what you do out there, right? This is the laboratory self-funding. Thrive, Cypress's tools for risk management, are the experiments. They're the, the experiments that you're doing in your laboratory, right? That's the Bunsen burner and all the things are working. And it's a return on investment. It's making a difference, right? The captive concept makes this a vacuum-sealed laboratory. Only those get in that are going to be dedicated to managing their own risk. Only those get in that are good risk to begin with. And what do you do moving forward? You have a closed, sealed, vacuum sealed laboratory with a bunch of different employers. So you have economy of scale, all focused on a single objective of managing their risk. Okay? Now, again, what's great about the concept from my mind is that, well, we do talk about innovation. If you break it into parts, none of it is terribly new. Self-funding, been around since the 70s. You're all doing it for a reason. It works. Self-funding in a captive. Captives work. They're a proven method for making a difference on your long-term risk. And risk management strategies. The things that Cyprus does well to help you curb your cost, those things are working. The very first slide that Tom did of the day shows that you're beating the national average overall. So if you put those three things together, that's what MCAP is. It brings it all together under one roof. Important to break down the relationships of parties. One of the questions we always get is, why is this not a MIWA? How does this structure? Three important and distinct transactions make up the way we develop this. First is the employer, you, with your TPA, 
with your broker, with your plan document, which uh, Ron will talk about a little bit, how important that is to, to the whole process, um, your RX partner, uh, all the other vendors that we'll talk about and, and hear from today, all those things come together. That's you up here, your self-funded plan, you as the fiduciary. You're purchasing stop-loss coverage under MCAP. You're purchase, purchasing it from Berkeley Life, just as you would in the open market. You're purchasing a stop-loss policy based on your own risk demographics. Your own risk demographics, your own region, what risk you pose is the price you get for that stop-loss policy. That's a single transaction. The next transaction is that you, as an employer, enter into a captive insurance program. You join through variations of membership, and that membership tells you the rights and obligations of forming and becoming part of your own insurance company. Essentially, that's what you're doing. You're forming and becoming part of your own insurance company. A distinct and separate transaction. Then, behind the scenes, Berkeley and the captive form a reinsurance agreement. And we'll dig into a little bit how that would look. But essentially, what that means here is that we cede risk and we cede premium over to the captive on what we take from the stop-loss side. I'll show you how that works. Actually, let me get into just a couple economy of scale slides, which are important. I was going to kill these as well, but these were actually developed from the Monte Carlo simulation. So I thought, you got to have this in here, right? The Monte Carlo type of thing. So anyways, this is one group, 100 life group. Flip a coin 100 times, and the bell curve basically says, a long, wide curve says, from a predictability standpoint, eh, not terribly predictable. A long, wide curve, you flip the coin 100 times, and it may come up, for the most part, in this range here. We need more predictability. So now, do the, lo the law of large numbers. We shift it to the left a little bit. We've gone from 100 lives to 1,000 lives. We begin to shift it in the right direction. The closer we get to predictability, the closer we get to curbing trend, which is, our, which is the killer over the course of time. Trend is the killer. Now we're moving it in that direction. Eliminate this slide for a minute. Pretend this slide says thrive. All the things that Tom mentioned Cyprus does under its approach to wellness. That's this slide, okay? So you were one life group, unpredictable. We're gonna move you to the left a little bit because we've got now 1,000 lives. You've got a little more predictability. Now we're doing all the things from a risk management standpoint. Boom, we're gonna move that even further over, okay? Th that's the concept in a nutshell. Boil these things down into a focused objective. Very similar slide, but at the core of MCAP, at the core of this whole philosophy of what we're doing, this is really it right here. In this first section right here, it says retain. Well, actually, there's two, the two arrows go in two different directions. You're all probably familiar with this at this time. Severity and frequency. Severity is the claims that come out of nowhere, the big whoppers, right? The scary claims, they're, they're, uh, let's, let's go through them. They're transplants, they're preemies, they're uh, hemophiliac claims, they're car accidents, all these things that come out of nowhere. That's frequency, I mean, that's severity. On the frequency side, it's your utilization. All the claims you occur as a group over the course of time, okay? Those are two levels of claims that we're talking about here. In this first category, what I would say to you is, what if we took, put a ceiling on, on the way frequency and severity could happen? Let's just say for the purposes of this discussion, we limit it to $25,000. Nothing over $25,000 is gonna go any higher. Okay, we're gonna limit it. The ceiling is $25,000 on any one claimant in your group. If you took that and you took the demographics for your 250 life group and you gave it to 10 actuaries, put 10 actuaries in a room and have them, that would be exciting, 10 actuaries in a room. If you did that, all 10 actuaries, if all claims were limited to under $25,000, all 10 actuaries would come up with just about the same number. It would come out to just about the same number based on your demographics. So what I would say to you is, if we can come up with a number that's predictable, why would you buy insurance on it? Take the risk yourself. It's really the essence of self-funding, right? Take the risk where it's predictable. That's here. Now we've got the next level. And what I would say is that there are claims between, and let's make up the numbers again, 25,300, 25,250 to make it clean because that will work into my next slide. 25 to 250, okay? In that range, not very predictable for a 100 life group. Not very predictable for a 250 life group. That's why you're purchasing coverage for it, and that's why the stop-loss carrier wants to make a profit on it, because it's unpredictable. What if you were purchasing coverage in that range at 1,000 lives, sharing the purchase of that coverage with 900 other employee lives? I would say to you, begin to share the risk. At 1,000 lives, that coverage is a heck of a lot more predictable, okay? So in that middle range, share the risk. The next level is transfer. So now we've got to a point where, again, the claims I just talked about a minute ago, the car accidents, the, the hemophiliacs, the preemies, we can't see those coming. 
They are trouble. They can kill our total assets that we've set aside for our health plan by insurance coverage. So the whole concept here is buy less insurance. That's what the captive is going to do for you. So step one in an MCAP approach would be what all of you have already done. You're self-insured. You're doing exactly the right thing. You elect to self-fund your benefits. You create and manage your own plan. You commit to a focused strategy of health management. You pay for claims on behalf of the plan itself, right? No changes there. Step two, again, will look very similar. Each employer has issued a stop loss policy with spec and ag, specific coverage and aggregate coverage. All of you, I'm sure, have it. Some of you might have just spec only, but for the most part, you've seen the fact that you have specific coverage for an individual that goes over a high level, aggregate coverage for your overall utilization. Important to note in our MCAP step two here that the purchase of a stop loss policy in this discussion looks no different than if you were buying it as a standalone basis out on the street. It is our stop loss policy filed in all 50 states. Same stop loss policy you'd get. So a, per a stop loss policy is purchased from Berkeley. Nothing looks different here. You're individually rated. We look at your demographics, the experience we have, the risks that are coming, and we price it out as we normally would. Each employer pays the premium on a monthly basis. Again, no different. Through, I'm assuming that Cyprus uh, remits the, the premium on behalf of you for the stop loss carrier. They do. So nothing looks different. You pay a monthly premium to the stop loss carrier, out it goes. No difference there. Stop loss policy reimburses employer for covered claims above the spec you get reimbursed. If it's, a, if it's a 50K spec deductible and a $75,000 $75, claim comes in, you get reimbursed $25,000 as you normally would. Claims get reimbursed as they normally would. There's spec advance funding so that if you have a large claim, you could get the advance funding on, uh, on top of the specific as well. This is the schematic to show how it would normally look. This is a group that has a 25K spec deductible. I'm gonna do a sidebar for one minute. In the captive arrangement, it generally makes more sense to buy a spec deductible lower than you might be used to. We'll get into that in the end, but that's just from a concept standpoint, which is why you'll see deductibles in our examples that are lower than you might be used to. This group has a $25,000 spec deductible. This is the traditional look. Anything that goes over 25 on the individual side, Berkeley Life Stop Loss covers it. On an aggregate basis, they have coverage over here. Berkeley Life covers them at a certain level. So now we're good. Everybody knows where we're at. This is consistent with what you're used to. Now we go to the captive structure. Berkeley Life reinsures the layer for this example, 25 to 250, but we'll talk about other unique uh, ways that we're doing this as well. Berkeley Life reinsures the layer between 25 and 250 to a captive insurance program. So what do I mean by that? If you were to take 200,000 in premium for a 55K spec, the actuary that's doing the pricing for that could take that 200,000 in premium and they could say, for the claims that are gonna happen, that we think are gonna happen between 55 and 100, the premium value is this amount. For the claims between, that we think are going to happen between 100 and 150, the premium value is this amount, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a, an actuary can layer the premium depending on what the expected risk would be for that group, right? Does that make sense? That's basically what we're doing here. We're saying you're paying on a monthly basis premium to Berkeley for $25,000 specific stop loss coverage. We receive all of that premium each month, and then we take the value of it between 25 and 250, and we stick it into the bucket into the captive bucket for you. And you're the next member in the captive in the same value, between 25 and 250, we take that premium, we stick it in a bucket. Stick it in the bucket for all the members in the captive. Now the captive is being filled up by the value of premium that Berkeley is reinsuring back to this insurance program, okay? The captive is a reinsurer of Berkeley Life. It does not issue policies. Kind of what our question that we had there, the importance of issuing policies out on the street. The regulation of insurance coverage as it would relate to providing benefits to an employee. So Berkeley Life is a filed stop loss carrier. The captive is not. They're a reinsurance company. They may not even be domiciled in the United States. Okay, and we can get into details on that as well. The captive receives premium for the layer from Berkeley, just like I talked about. So that layer of risk that this new formed insurance company, let's make up a name here. So Cypress Captive is this new formed insurance company, and they are getting premium for the risk that they're taking between 25 and 250, and they're getting the premium from each of the members that are in it, okay? Each employer provides a collateral to the captive in case the premium is insufficient. So what that means is the captive, you now have formed an insurance company, just like Berkeley's an insurance company and all the carriers around the room. We are in a position such that we know what expected claims are on our group. Mathematically, we look at all the risks that we're taking and we say, here's the premium we need. We as an insurance company have to put aside a certain amount of money 
should the claims go in another direction? Should they be worse than expected? A captive insurance company is going to need to do the same. Generally speaking, the way it would work would be whatever you pose as a risk to the captive, so you're all individually underwritten, 250 lives, 100 lives, an older population, a younger population, an expensive market, a cheaper market, it doesn't matter. Your premium is developed for you, your risks are for you, you pose a certain risk to the captive, and therefore the premium value for your risk is going into the captive at the same level. That also means the collateral you have to post is equivalent to the risk you pose to the captive. Berkeley Life limits the captive's exposure with a program aggregate. So basically, you have now formed your own insurance company. You have, you're receiving premium on a monthly basis. Claims are being paid on a monthly basis by your insurance company. And you have all put aside some downside risk in the form of either credit or cash that sits there pr to protect should claims go in the wrong direction. But that is a finite level. So that cash you put aside has a ceiling. When it hits that ceiling, Berkeley protects the captive again. So it's almost like this. Under $25,000, you take the risk as one employer. You're taking all the risk yourself under $25,000. 25 to 250, you're sharing it as an insurance program amongst 10 employers. Over that 250 mark, or should all the, all the dollars be exposed, Berkeley takes the risk from there. Sound familiar to what I showed you from a, from a breakdown standpoint? Take the risk yourself when it's predictable. Share the risk yourself when it's predictable at scale. Purchase coverage when things get too scary for you. Unused captive funds are returned to the employer. Here's really one of the upside benefits of the captive arrangement. Each of you are filling the bucket in the captive with premium based on your expected claims. There's no profit built in, okay? So it's pure premium that's going in. And you think about that for a second. When you traditionally buy stop loss coverage from Berkeley, Berkeley wants to make a profit on all the dollars that you send us. We're making a profit margin on it. At the captive level, since you're, an insurance, you're your own insurance company, you're not there to make a profit. We're only putting in premium at the expected claims level, what we think your losses are going to be based on your demographics. Does that make sense? So there's no profit built in, which is an immediate saving from an overall cost standpoint. At the end of the year, when all of that premium is put in the bucket and all the expected claims have now happened, if the expected claims were better than the premium that went in, that is returned to you on a pro rata basis based on what you put in, returned to you as owners of that insurance company. So let me get into, we'll break down this from a schematic standpoint, staying on the same uh, direction that we went in. We have the group on the left-hand side that has a, uh, four groups. This is uh, four groups in Cypress Cap. We can pretend it's 10, whatever it would be. All these groups have purchased a $25,000 spec deductible, and they have the coverage from there on out. They've now all entered into a captive arrangement. So we have a new middle layer that shows up, and what we're saying here is this is the captive layer now. This is the group retention layer. Member, individual member is what you'd be called. You're a member within the captive, and the group is now taking insurance between 25 and 250. This, cap, this uh, Cypress captive insurance program has taken the risk. Above that, should things go wrong, Berkeley's got you covered at a certain threshold, any claim that goes over 250, or, or from an overall standpoint, when the, when the total uh, premium is exhausted, Berkeley would cover it as well. This schematic shows the addition of the collateral level. Okay, so what we had here, and I know this is kind of a funky example, a little busy, but let me break it down. This is a group that was coming off insured. They were $1 million fully, assured, fully insured equivalent. They were paying $1 million in fully insured costs, okay? every year, whatever it might be. They've gone into the MCAP model. $525,000 is their claims that we're projecting for them under 25,000. Remember the predictable level? We're fairly confident that we can predict this group is gonna have $525,000 claims all below that $25,000 ceiling. Very predictable. So of their million dollars that they were paying, 52% of it, 53% of it, is for very predictable claims. If Cyprus, if Thrive makes a difference on those claim dollars, that stays in your individual employer's pocket, right? Because you're not, you're not spending that money for the claims as they incur. The claims never happen. We save money. So the chance to save money is for you, one individual employer here. Here's the next level. $275,000, focus on this for a minute. $275,000 is the premium that you're paying to the captive for the coverage of 25 to 250. Your share, also called expected claims for your group, is $275,000. We expect for Justin's group, for his employer, that they will have $275,000 in claims between 25 and 250. And therefore, that's the premium outlay that will go into the captive on the behalf of his employer group, $275,000. So 525 
plus the 275. And remember, the 275 is for expected claims between 25 and 250. Over here is the collateral. What we're saying is because, and I'll, I'll pick back on Justin again, because Justin posed $275,000 in risk to the captive, we expect his claims to be at that level, he needs to put aside a certain amount of collateral, and that's here. That all goes into the captive layer. 150 plus the 275 is 425. So the total captive assets put into play by Justin's group is $425,000. Now add that up across the board. For every other in group that joins this captive as from a membership standpoint, that 425 becomes a pretty big number. The bet we want is, the bet we want is that the claims between 25 and 250 for all of you that join the captive are less than the combination of all the premium you put in. If they're less, you get it back. If they're more, you begin to all eat into your collateral that you've set aside across the board, okay? So that's sort of the game you play. We're pricing it. To come into the captive, it is priced at expected claims. You really price the break even. If you do better than break even, it's because you're managing your risk better. Good news, you get the money back. If you, if you do worse, then you're going into a collateral standpoint. The upside of that is the stability you're getting there. The collateral is put in on a collective pool across the board. It doesn't penalize one group for that one bad year. It doesn't reward one group for their one good year. You're all in this together from an insurance program you're all going to have bad years. So the, cap, the, the capital, the collateral, is spread across the board for everybody to benefit from worse than expected claims. From a total cost standpoint, it should look really no different to you, plus or minus a few points, than what your traditional self-funding would look. So the question is always, how much more is this going to cost me? The fact is, we can lower margins, we can lower some of the pricing expectations from an overall standpoint, aggregate attachment points, because you're joining together as a large group. So your overall cost exposure, this group was a million dollar fully insured premium. If you add up all the costs here, it's 15% over their insured costs, which is pretty common in terms of taking group from insured to self-funded. So overall cost exposure uh, isn't a significant downside. It is an investment. It is a gamble. You're taking a risk. This is not for everybody. But where you're taking the risk is to say, I am better off with an economy of scale and the stability I get from a larger group year in and year out. Remember my five years back? Five years forward, it's not about one year anymore. It's about the long-term haul, okay? So that's the way this concept works. Now, the 200,000 I put here above, that is for the combination of Cypress's fees. That includes all your fixed cost dollars. That includes buying reinsurance for above those levels. You still need to buy that coverage for the big claims that might happen. All those things added up is $200,000. So there's your example of breaking down the, the way the whole thing would work. The, the question was, should we eat into the collateral does it need to be replenished at year end? Is that, is that a good, okay. 2012 is a single year for this insurance company. In, in, in our, in, from the carriers in the room, our, in our treaty world, it's a closed out period. So 2012, for the, I'm gonna use that for an example, is a closed year. The insurance year 2012 for the Cypress Captive Insurance Program closes out. Your letter of credit, your cash, your collateral is still dedicated to that year until it has wound out and run its course. In the meantime, you're ready to enter into year two. You've got to put up collateral again for year two before your collateral for year one has been released. So your year two is a whole new program. And why is it a new program? Because for one, finite risk. We've got to close out the door so we can uh, underwrite it and move forward to the next year. The second reason is that hopefully we're growing and you're adding new members and it becomes a whole new process going forward. And so the question was basically on this top level, I'm buying insurance. And, and I wouldn't say that it's more expensive from a reinsurance standpoint. I would say what, what, it, what it should be equivalent to is, for this example, is purchasing stop loss at a $250,000 level. You're purchasing a $250,000 stop loss spec deductible. So what we would do, now remember, this is just an example, but let's say that, let's say God willing, we come out of here and we got 20 groups that wanna join, get together and do this thing. 20 groups, I would say, you know what? 250, you might wanna purchase reinsurance at 400,000. Make that layer even bigger there. Why buy less insurance? You got a lot more credibility in here. 250 is because remember, we're talking about baby steps here, getting some groups to come in it from a, uh, to get familiar with the way it would work. No matter what happens, you're ridding yourselves of the profit margin from the carrier in that level. And if you're fully insured, you're ridding yourselves of the profit margin in this level and that level from there. So the, the squeeze, I'm sorry, sir, go ahead, yeah. The, the squeeze would be, the, the question the gentleman in the back asked earlier was the, the fixed spec deductibles. 
we can make that, we, what we could do is we could take this risk layer and we could say, whatever deductible you come in at, the captive insurance company will take the first $200,000 over your spec, okay? So Justin comes in at a 75K spec, he, he's, he poses risk to the captive between 75 and 275. You with me? The captive's taking $200,000 over the spec. You come in at 100K spec, and so you pose a captive layer risk of 100 to 300. So it's a floating $200,000 over any spec deductible. We have programs running that way as well. Okay, so this is really, this is, this is vanilla for concept and explanation, but we can dig into it a little bit more. You get more credible, you get more experience. Again, you stretch that number out. Some of our programs that are more experienced are actually driving the spec deductible down. Again, drive that deductible down. Where does the premium go? You, it's more premium, it's more expensive to buy our lower spec deductible, but where does it go? It goes to you as the insurance program, right? Every captive would be a little different. Um, I'll get into sort of the, the, the concept of captive and, and how you would sink your teeth into what, it, what captive program would look like. But the accounting of it really depends on the domicile of where the captive is. But generally, let's say that it would be from a, it would always leapfrog. You would never have three letters of credit put up for any given year. So we're always fairly comfortable that when year one is settled, you have to invest into year two. When year two is settled, we're releasing year one. So the leapfrog is the consistently, sorry about that, is consistently how we would do it from there. Settlement standpoint would be the same. If there is a, a surplus, if you happen to beat expected claims, then that surplus would take a while to settle out, but you'd have all the financial accounting. You'd get a financial statement as you do for your own organization. You'd get a financial statement for this entity that you, that you had formed and put together. The options for MCAP would be letter of credit or cash. So it would always be the same focus of assets, the same way you'd, you'd treat your stop loss premium. It's not necessarily a claim asset. It is a protection asset for coverage for your self-funded plan. All of the premium that you've all put in, all of the letters of credit or collateral that you've all put in is all that that captive has to pay for its claims. If the claims exceed all those numbers, Berkeley's on the risk from there on out. The, the question is, is there, is there a pro rata share of risk? There is in that the risk you pose to the captive, you as one individual employer, is the premium you're putting into the captive. You're being underwritten for your own demographics and the premium's putting in for the risk that you pose. And so it's equivalent across the board. We underwrite these risks as if they were our own. Um, as a matter of fact, we probably are less flexible from a pricing standpoint. So we're not trying to buy business into the captive. We're putting them in at the right number. What we think expected claims are for your group is what they are. That way we don't burn another group. So for example, if I put you into the captive at a lesser price, lesser expected cost than what it really should be, who's gonna pay the price for that? all the other members. The collateral is a fundamental, is associated with the risk you pose to the captive. The risk you pose to the captive is the premium value of your group, okay? So they're all related to each other. It's the same. So again, Justin's collateral is going to look a little different than, sir, what, what's your name, sir? Yeah. Than Tim's, because their groups are a little different. They pose different risks to it. But percentage-wise, it will be the same. Justin will have a percentage of collateral posted for the risk that he poses to the captive at the same percentage as Tim. If expected claims were worse than we thought, and the, let's say the captive begins to move into the collateral level, and all of you had a drawdown on your letter of credit. So again, like a credit card, you, you've got some assessment on your letter of credit. It gets drawn down a little bit, but when the captive settles itself, it is now released. That letter of credit is released. It's gone and done. So we've used those dollars, like a credit card, we've used it to pay for the additional cost of your expected claims, it's now released and let go, or you can apply it to a subsequent year, build it back up again from there. We're always focused on mature contracts, pretty flexible on that. I mean, Berkeley, as a stop loss carrier, traditional carrier, we can do pretty much anything. Our recommendation is never to come in on a 12-12, never to come in on any immatures, not really an issue for groups like, like this that are already self-funded, but come in on mature contracts and do that consistent across the board. So, as long as all the groups are coming in from a consistent standpoint on a deductible, we can be as flexible as the sponsor. If Tom is the Cypress Cap sponsor, he's going to say, you know what, I want all groups coming in at 1215 Berkeley. Good, that's how we'll do it. The first one was how flexible can we be in terms of the plan design for each individual group that joins it? And the second one was how long does it take for the final settlement of a, of a captive year? Plan design flexibility is entirely up to the group. So if you consider for a moment that what we're talking about is claims in that risk level, the fact that you have a $1,000 deductible and you have a $500 deductible is not going to impact claims at the captive layer. They're not really gonna change 
the, the mid-level catastrophic claims, okay? So plan design is completely flexible. Now, we're building programs right now where the sponsor, the, the, the Cyprus component of it, or the agency says, you know what, I only want three plan, I want consistency of plan design. So there's only gonna be three to get in. Berkeley, here are the three plan designs, and we underwrite it the way they want it to be underwritten. So that's sort of uh, in the eye of the beholder on who's driving the ship. The second component is the tail and the run out. The, um, Stop loss doesn't have a long tail like the other side of the world does. So stop loss can close out fairly quickly compared to the four years you'd get on a captive on, on the other side. So generally 18 months, 18 to 20 months, if 2012 ended, all things would be said and done just about 18 months from that end of that year. The uh, lead time is really up to the group that comes together. So when we have a homogenous approach where we've got uh, groups that are, have some affinity to each other, they're uh, you know, making up beverage distributors, they're all together, they're in a captive already on another world, they're, they have a bit of a brotherhood from a, a fraternity standpoint, they can come together and move pretty quickly. Heterogeneous, where we would say you're all kind of doing different things, but you believe in Cyprus, you believe in joining this captive would make sense to you, you're all going to commit to it, and our, what binds us together is our commitment to risk management, those take a little bit longer. Um, it's all in the commitment to the group. If, uh, there are agencies that we're working with now that can get, have been able to get things going within six months, three to six months. There are those that six months go by and we haven't herded the cats really together yet. So um, Berkeley is here to do that. We're there all along the way. We go to every meeting. We'll meet with every individual employer. We'll do the devil in the details type of talk. We'll be part of the whole process until you get enough of the cats together to begin your program. That's it, thank you.